Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another uh, bite-sized episode. I am your host, Noah Dory, and this is Raising the New Earth podcast. So cannabis and tobacco have been used in countless and worldwide religious ceremonies for centuries. Native Americans cultivated tobacco thousands of years ago because it was considered a medicinal plant that was used in with a lot of respect and a lot of integrity, and it was integrated into their uh, religious ceremonies. Now in modern days, we have learned that um, smoking has negative effects on our physical health. It causes uh, respiratory problems, increasing aging and cancer amongst other uh, many other issues. But I don't think we've ever examined um, what the impact that smoking has on our subtle energy, our prana, our life force. So in this episode, we're going to explore how marijuana and tobacco impact our etheric bodies and the health of our different chakras, our different um, life energy centers. So smoking both tobacco and uh, marijuana will affect your chakras through the negative effects of tar left in your in your lungs every time you take a puff there is this tar that coats every inch of uh, the lungs and the blood vessels which causes asthma like symptoms and hyperactivity in the immune system smoking we know that it also um, degrades uh, the elasticity of our cells in a respiratory tract due to deposits in the cell walls so what happens is that this leftover tar will cause um, a blockage in our lungs and that will prevent our body to inhale the prana, the life energy that we all need and it will weaken the chakras in that process. So what we see is a very low energy, almost like cathartic-like energy circulating through, through the body. And nicotine, because nicotine acts as both stimulant and a depressant to the central nervous system, this is when the addiction is is maintained and is really, really, really hard to break. And every time you try and surrender to that addiction, that need for addiction comes back again, causing the imbalance in all seven chakras. Um, we We have to notice though that Although it harms all seven chakras, the the use of tobacco and or marijuana harms um, most of is the throat chakra, the the vishuddha, the the throat chakra, because when you smoke, you are literally and virtually guaranteed to develop a, a sore throat, and this is because when uh, when tar coats that throat chakra, it makes it difficult for you to breathe. So people that smoke will immediately start coughing more than usual. And eventually you're not going to breathe the way that you're really supposed to. And uh, and that absorbable of energy is, is, is going to be manifested every time we take that puff. And that is why it is so essential for for our lives to have our surrounding, um, our surroundings filled with fresh air because we're not just inhaling oxygen, but we're also inhaling prana that gives us life and vitality. And if you ever notice that, you know, when we're very nervous or anxious, we need to take a series of deep breaths to calm ourselves down. So these are the deep breaths that help our prana and our life force within our body that causes relaxation and removes all that chatter, the beta brain waves in our mind that is the one that gives us anxiety to begin with. My parents smoked for, I think, 35 years each. And I remember as a little girl, um, my dad used to give me money to go to the local market and buy him cigarettes. And the way that he incentivize it was by by uh by telling me I could keep the change it's like yeah sure I'm gonna of course I'm gonna shop for cigarettes for you and I'll keep the change 
eventually uh i refused to do it with my mom when my mom used to send me to buy her cigarettes and you know back then it was it wasn't against the law for a child to buy cigarettes um so when i when i did uh when my mom tried to convince me to go buy her cigarettes i just said no because he never told me to keep the change so it's like no i'm not gonna buy you cigarettes um both my dad and my mom um, managed to get off that horrible addiction and the way that they did that my dad actually just quit whole turkey he just woke up one day and he was tired of hearing himself coughing all this mucus in his throat and he, he just quit my mom used uh, hypnotherapy. She did hypnotherapy for, I think it was uh, sugar, gluten, and addiction for cigarettes. It was like a, a bundle of some sort, and it actually helped. She did um, two treatments, and it helped. She has never smoked since. She can't even smell, stand the smell of smoke around her. So, yeah, they, they both quit. And it wasn't, and I remember as a child, I wasn't, um, I wasn't exactly against the smell of cigarettes. It was all around me and where I grew up, everyone smoked in supermarkets, everywhere and everyone. So it wasn't, a, a, it wasn't a, a smell that I was disgusted by, but later on in life, after my parents quit smoking, I found myself being very, very sensitive to the smell. So, you know, still, if I go to places where people smoke, I was like, I can't even stand it. Uh, nor do my kids because they don't grow up with it. So let's talk a little bit about addiction to cigarettes. Um, we know that nicotine is a very addictive drug and that's partly why so many people are hooked on cigarettes. Um, but there are other reasons. Um, why it's so challenging to break an addiction. And one of the reason that someone likes smoking is part of is part because of the adrenaline that we talked about it before with eating disorders as well. That adrenaline that floods your system when you are an active smoker is very, very addicting. And so even when you just put a cigarette to your lips, that anticipation can cause the adrenaline to rush through your body. And the more you wait before you even put a cigarette to your lips, the anticipation um the, the, the more adrenaline flows through your system. Often people quit smoking and their appetite seems to ramp up. Like I remember uh, growing up uh, in Israel, I remember that I've seen a lot of, especially women who wanted to look fit, just living off of cigarettes and coffee to very addictive substances. And yet that's how they kept their weight and we used to laugh about it. it was like oh yeah you you know you have your 12 cup of coffee have you eaten anything today and literally the answer was no or just a little salad so it's a very addicting cycle and it's not in vain that they were addicted to coffee and cigarettes together right um so there's that adrenaline surge um that we feel for that brief brief moment while you're smoking and it's 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 it's, it goes straight into the brain. So what, once that chemical ignites, it goes straight into the brain and gives you a brief adrenaline hit that is far more addicting than, you know, than anything else. And unfortunately, um, following this short uh, spurge, your body becomes incredibly acidic. And as a result, you're likely to crave another cigarette right after you finish that cigarette in order to receive that additional um, alkalizing, alkalizing hit, like additional adrenaline boost. Um, Anthony Williams talks about two very cool tricks for those that are addicted to cigarettes. One trick involves very high quality chocolate. Now, we know that chocolate isn't the, always the best food choice, um, but it can come in very handy for those who are trying to quit smoking. And so you, what he talks about there, he said, well, you, you take two packs of cigarettes, empty one pack entirely, and then fill the other pack with smaller amount of cigarettes than you normally smoke. Then you break apart a uh, high quality chocolate bar. So it's like 70%, 80, 85%. And then you fill the emptied pack with small pieces of chocolate. Whenever you take the usual cigarette break and you feel an adrenaline rush coming as you get ready to smoke that cigarette, take a piece of chocolate out of the empty pack, 
and pop one or two small pieces into your mouth. Just have that chocolate in your mouth. Don't chew or don't swallow them right away. And instead, just leave them in your mouth until they melt in your mouth completely. Because we know that nicotine is very aromatic. And so we talked about nicotine addiction and caffeine addiction. They're very aromatic. And if you put that chocolate pieces in your in in uh, in in the cigarette box ahead of time, the chocolate will have soaked up some of that sense, some of that nicotine. During your next time or your next break, when you reach for the cigarettes, you can have a cigarette from the box of fewer cigarettes. So keep both packs on you throughout the day and continue to cut down on cigarettes at a pace that feels manageable for you and not too overwhelming. So that was the one trick. Another trick is the walking off trick. So when you are walking outside, because you are walking, you're likely to take fewer puffs of, you know, from your cigarette. So you won't be getting as many addictive hits of nicotine. When you are going to be taking more oxygen because you're walking, you may even experience a sense of calmness uh, because of that gentle walking movement. And the adrenaline that floods your body from the cigarette will also be better used when you're walking as opposed to when you stand and smoke or when you sit and smoke. Um, so this is also a little bit more challenging of a habit because it's really, really hard to walk and smoke, right? Versus just standing or sitting. So you may be less inclined to pick up that cigarette next time, right? It's like, you know, when I say to my, to my clients who need to lose weight, if some of their bad habits are the ones that are, you know, involve them eating from the pots while they cook. Or, or standing up while they're eating or feeling like they're in a rush, grabbing that cup of coffee and off they go. It's that breaking of the habit. What happens if you sit down? Are you craving the same things? What happens if you don't pair that food with the same thing you're used to? So the same thing with the cigarette, the, the walking off your smoking habit is like if you walk, you'll probably be less inclined to to take a drag from of your cigarette because you'll be busy walking. So I encourage you to try both the chocolate and the walking techniques and let me know how it worked for you. Again, for my parents, what worked was my dad is very strong-minded. So for him, cold turkey really worked and they haven't, I mean, they haven't uh, um, broken their, their vow to themselves per se. They haven't gone back to smoking, neither my mom nor my dad. And for my mom, it was hypnotherapy. So try to bring in more healing food as you work on your addiction. Uh, try some supplements. Again, consult with your practitioner, but try supplements like uh, California poppy, GABA that we talked about it is a neurotransmitter enhancer, magnesium that can really help to calm your nervous system, lemon balm, the same thing, passion flower, 5-HTP and ALA. Um, these are some of the supplements that can really be helpful. Try to grab that chamomile tea, peppermint tea, lemon balm tea instead of the coffee. If you feel that you're addicted to both caffeine and nicotine, break that addiction and really lean on the positive support of family and friends. Those that don't smoke, those that, you know, if you have a drinking issue, those that don't drink. So try to try to expand your circle of friends so that you can see that there is other habits that are possible for you while you are celebrating life because we know that planet earth is such a beautiful place but it can also be very stressful living in this particular century and and stress can cause us to turn into habits that are not healing in the long run and and with everything that we have to endure we have to we have to try and turn to those that are there for us. So we turn to the supplements that are there for us. We turn to healing foods that can support our healing um, and our recovery. We turn to, we turn away from habits that no longer serve us. So just know that you're not alone and you can absolutely regain your spiritual and physical strength to overcome whatever it is that you need to overcome. And there's also another aspect of the angels that I personally call into my life every single day. So we know that negative spiritual energy, uh, this Kabbalah teaches us as well, can really play a main role in addiction. 
while you're fighting to be to overcome an addiction it it can be very invaluable to call on some of the angels for guidance and support so you know if if it was me struggling with that particular addiction i can call in the angel of 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 strong will or the angel of um strength or the angel of addiction breaking whatever i honestly i just put a title to that angel and i call onto them into my lives to strengthen me and then i i become very intentional about what it is that i want from that angel and how they can be of service to me because you know that angels um can only be called upon in order to help you they don't you know they can't do something if you don't call upon them so if you um you need to call upon them out loud and i know it can sound a little strange for those who don't have faith or don't believe in angels but honestly if you've been struggling with that addiction your whole life or the majority of your life just ask yourself what do i have to lose right so what do i have to lose so try that try that for 30 days try track and see see if it makes you feel even better maybe it makes you feel supported maybe maybe you feel so alone that you have forgotten that you can have friends and you can have your guides and your spirits that are here to help you both from the natural world and the supernatural world. So you have nothing to lose. Um, yeah, try it and let me know in the comments um, if that worked for you. If you have any questions, you can contact me on raisingthenewearth at gmail.com. Um, make sure you follow us on every podcast platform, uh, Instagram and YouTube channel as well. So have a wonderful day and a wonderful week and I'll see you soon.